418 er so here is the final video on how does prayer work? And we are talking about why don't my prayers get answered? I don't understand. God, I prayed. I prayed for this person to get healed and it didn't happen. I prayed for this job and I didn't get it. I prayed to pass this test and it didn't work. God, I prayed for it not to, 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 to rain when I went to Disneyland and it still rained. God, why aren't my prayers being answered? And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to dig into that. So this video might be slightly longer than the other ones, but stay with it. Because I believe that if you can get answers to why your prayers aren't answered, it will actually help you to pray more and to see more answers to your prayer happen. So let's jump into this. Uh, first of all, I've heard some people say, well, what does John 15, 16 mean? And if you've never read John 15, 16, it can feel very confusing. It says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. He puts no qualifications on this, right? He says, whatever you ask for, the Father will give you if you use my name. And I think that John, the writer of this, uh, he probably had a lot of people ask him that question. And, and so uh, he clarifies himself in 1 John. 1 John 5, 14 says this, and we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him, anything that pleases him. W what's this saying? He's saying you don't just have a blank check, right? Like I heard this movie one time and, and they're like, they're like, you prayer is just like writing a letter to God. And, and you just put, you just say the name of Jesus. And that's like putting a stamp on and that'll get it up there. That is the worst theology. That is horrible. That's not how it works. See the word name refers to someone's nature and their character. Names had meanings in those days. So when it says, say, you can pray anything in my name, he's saying, based on my character, based off of who I am, based off of what I'm doing and what pleases me, he says, if you ask anything that pleases him, he'll give it to you. So we don't have a blank check. We have a check for whatever's in the bank. If you were to write a check for a million dollars from, from my checking account and you were to try to cash it, you would get zero dollars because there's not a million dollars in there. And so when you ask God for certain things, you're, am I writing things that are pleasing to him, that are according to his will? Now, does that mean we can never ask for what we want and we can never ask for it to not rain when we go to Disneyland? Of course not. I do believe that things like that are in God's nature to do things, to bless his people, to give us things that are great. But, but at the same time, we have to ask ourselves, what, if our, what do our motivations look like? How do I approach God? Is he like a genie? Like, how am I looking at this? In, in James chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, it says this, What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have so you can scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war, take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. He's like a rapper. He's just flowing. He's like, yeah, yeah, right? He says, even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. He's saying, you're, you're, you're just treating God like a genie. You don't even care. All you want is what you want. You don't want God's will. You don't want his desires. You don't want to please him. You just want what you want. And so you're still not getting your prayers answered because he's a better father than you are a child. Meaning this, he's not just going to give you anything and everything you ask for because he knows what's best for you and what's good for you. So we look at that, right? Could God stop the weather? And God, I'm about to go on this trip and we need it to not do this and not rain and not think, God, would you please? And I believe that when you have a relationship with God, yes, of course you can. Because I believe that God wants to do cool things that for his people and that when your life isn't built around yourself, when you want to please God, God loves to do things that please us. Why? Because it's a relationship. Mark 6, 5 through 6, Jesus is going to do some miracles. And if, and if you, this is going to be interesting because we have this thing about God, like God can do whatever he wants and he can. But God, again, partners with people. Mark 6, 5 through 6, it says, And because of their unbelief, 
He couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Let me tell you this. If there's something God's going to be amazed about me with, I don't want it to be how much I can doubt. He's like, these are the most hardcore doubting people I've ever seen. And it says he couldn't do many miracles there. Why? Because of their unbelief. But God can do whatever he wants. Yes, he can, but he partners with people. He partners with people. There are things that you've prayed for for other people, and God has opened up the opportunity for them, made a way for them. But because of their unbelief, because of their complaints, because of their issues, God hasn't been able to move in their lives the way he wanted to. Other reasons why prayers not might happen. Psalm 34.10. I love this one. I love this one because it makes me, it just makes me so grateful that God is God and I'm not. Psalm 34, 10, even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. You will lack no good thing. So if you're praying for something and you haven't gotten it, it's very possible that it's not good or it's not good yet, or that you're not ready for it to be good for you. See, God is a good father. He's not just trying to, oh, yeah, you can have whatever you want, my little baby. I'm just here to just make you happy. No, he's not here just to make you happy. He is here to help you become more like Jesus. He's here governing the whole world. And he looks down on little people like us and goes, I love you. I will move on your behalf. How crazy is that? It's incredible. It's incredible. I love that about God. He says, I can look at my life and be like, God, I asked for that and I don't have it. Then it's not good. If it was good, I'd have it. You hear me? You hear what I'm saying? Luke 22, 42. Jesus is in the garden. He says, Jesus, he says, he says, Father, if there's any way to let this cup pass for me, if there's any way for me to not have to go to the cross and still complete your will. I, I, I would choose anything else, but not my will, but yours be done. God knows best. He, he, the Father knows best. And so there are things you may not understand until you're in heaven. That God goes, here's why I didn't do that. Here's why I didn't allow that. Here's why I didn't say yes to that. Here's why I did say you needed to do that. You may not find out until heaven, but you can know that he knows what's best and his timing is best. Luke 18, 7 through 8. Jesus is talking. He says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Meaning this, sometimes I think we just give up too soon praying for something. There are some things you pray for, boom, you believe it's going to happen, and you just, God's going to do it when it's ready. But there are other things that you pray and you persist and you keep at it and you keep praying and you keep believing. Like revival, you keep praying and you keep believing. Like healing, you keep praying and you keep believing. Like someone's salvation, you keep praying and you keep believing. And sometimes we give up so soon, but God still wanted to partner with us. But because we lost faith and we lost hope, we stopped. God knows what's best. So, so when your prayers aren't answered, Number one, you have to check and see what's your relationship with God like? Because if your relationship with God isn't good, then you won't have the most important thing, and that's trust. Trust in his character. Trust in his plan. Trust in what he wants to do in this situation. You won't have trust. So I want to encourage you that you make prayer just a key part of your life because prayer matters. Prayer impacts the, the, the whole way that the world goes. Prayer changes people. Prayer moves the heart of God. Prayer is powerful. That's how prayer works.